Servers are computers, right? But they are not exactly the same as laptops and desktops. So what's the difference? That is exactly what we are going to find out today. And worry not, no prior enterprise IT knowledge is needed. I will explain everything in very simple terms using an easy to follow lightboarding story. This is the second video in our Introduction to Enterprise IT series. If you haven't seen the first one, the half an hour introduction to the entire enterprise IT landscape, I highly recommend watching it first. I will leave the link down below. This video is a cut down version of the full 36 minute course module that all of our members at Tech Enthusiast Academy have access to and much more. If you're not a student yet, sign up at academy.techenthusiast.com. Now, let's get started. All right, so servers. In a way, this is simple. Servers are just computers. They are just specific kind of computers with emphasis on some components, on some functionalities and features that are a little bit different than consumer laptops and desktops. So talking about laptops and desktops first, what do we have uh, with any computer, basically, whether it's a laptop or desktop or anything like that, we have, of course, some kind of a chassis or a case, enclosure, whatever you want to call it. And the main, most important thing that we have inside the component, we have a so-called CPU or central processing unit. This is the processor. This is, if you want um, an analogy, this is the brains of a computer. Memory, something that we call RAM, random access memory. This is the memory that we use on the fly when we're doing something. When you open a Word document or when you start browsing the internet, that is happening in the RAM. And then there's another kind of memory. We have a bunch of drives where we store long-term data. That's the graphics card, 3D modeling and gaming and uh, maybe video editing. More and more these days, of course, as well, artificial intelligence tasks. Then uh, what we still need is some kind of a network adapter. We have, for example, local area network adapter here. We are missing one important component here which is operating system, of course. You can have Windows 10, you can have Linux as well, OS X, Mac OS, or something like that. Doesn't matter, hardware needs software. On top of that, of course, then we're having applications. If we think about how servers specifically are different to laptops and desktops, those consumer computers. So this is the big difference, one user per client device here, multiple users using this. And that has a lot of implications. Let's imagine this server that we have here. This is running some critical email services, for example. We might be running websites or some other super critical applications here that all of these users using these client devices need all the time in order for them to do their work. So if this breaks down, it disturbs one person's work. If this one breaks down, it disturbs a lot more people's work. When we design server hardware and software, the main emphasis should be on availability. Secondly, you, you have to have a lot of resources available here, a lot of calculation power, storage capacity, and so on. Of course, because we are not only servicing the needs of one user, but multiple users. So we have to have a lot more capacity. With the consumer computers, laptops and desktops, we most probably have just one drive. Here on the server side, we might have a couple of dozen of drives and they are enterprise grade. So they are, when, when the manufacturer of those drives are designing them, they are focusing again on availability. Here on the left side, we most probably have just one CPU. But here on the server side, we mostly have two CPUs. We also have single socket uh, servers, but most of the time we're talking about at least two CPUs. 
we might also have four CPUs. And they are not your consumer grade CPUs. They are specifically made for servers. We talked about random access memory here on the consumer side. We might have 8 or 16 or 32 gigs or maybe a little bit more here on our desktop or laptop. When we're talking about uh, servers, we have lots more of these dim modules here on the server. We might go up to a terabyte or two terabytes or even more of uh, this RAM memory, which is <laughs> insane. We have the LAN adapter. We have the same idea with the LAN adapter as previously from uh, on this side, on the consumer side. Storage area network adapter is connecting to a special kind of network. It's not a network that communicates between different servers and or other servers and other computers. It's a network that communicates to a storage network, providing additional data storage capacity on top of these locally installed drives. We want to duplicate everything because we are paranoid. We have to have two power supplies in case one of them dies, can happen. This GPU in a server, it's probably much, much smaller than on this uh, consumer side here. Of course, if you are running some artificial intelligence training or inferencing, you might need super powerful GPUs or multiple of them. One thing we do have here, which is super interesting on the server side that the consumer computers don't have, remote management chip. So you can access that server, for example, remote power on and power off. So you can access through the network and power it on, recycle the power. You can also have remote monitoring tools for that. You can use a remote mouse, virtual keyboard and everything like that. Super, super crucial, important part of servers these days. Everybody is managing servers remotely. Nobody's there in front of them all the time. And one last difference, we need, of course, operating system here as well. So there's a server version of Windows that Microsoft develops. You can also run Linuxes and whatever you want to use here, as long as it is meant to be running as a server. There you go. Servers are just computers with emphasis on availability, performance, and capacity. If you want to learn more about servers or enterprise IT and get a cool course completion certificate to brag with, go to academy.deckenthusiast.com and sign up for the course. Next video will be about the basics of enterprise storage. Subscribe and hit that bell button to be the first to know when that's released. Thanks for watching. Until the next one.